Hey friends, welcome back. Today we've got a Q&A for you. This was for when we hit 25,000 subscribers, which if you check the sub count, that was like 2,500 subscribers ago. So we're a little slow, sorry about that. But at least we're doing it. If you're new around here, I hope that you enjoyed the video and please consider subscribing. Also, please consider heading over to the Instagram page right here across our faces and following us over there for more fun and shenanigans. So this Q&A is one of, I don't know, we've done like probably five or six prior to this, or at least a it's few that were, handful. yeah, they were split into multiples. This is my husband, if you have not met Will. If you've been around, you've met Will. <laughs> we asked for questions on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. I keep going to lift my glasses up. This is clearly not wearing my glasses right now. We're gonna try and make this quick so I don't have to separate it into multiple videos, but we tend to get a little chatty. Also, we asked uh, if there were questions for Jackson and Alice, our kids, to drop those in the comments at the time as well. And so we will bring them in after this portion and have them answer their questions. Because they are very wordy. Yeah, they're wordy. And we're going to try and keep that, like, speedy as well. So we will go ahead and start. This question is from Lisa Ballard. She says... As a housewife, do you catch grief from friends? And if so, how do you handle the comments? I've been home for 22 years and still get negative comments. Um, friends and family don't really say anything to me. If they're thinking anything negative, they don't say it to me. I would say I'd probably give myself more grief about being a stay-at-home mom. You get that guilt of not contributing. I've probably had negative comments here on the channel about how I'm a stay-at-home mom, but I don't really address those in any sort of way. Have you heard anyone say anything about how awesome I am? <laughs> <laughs> no, not particularly. I mean. uh, so, no, I think it's more and more common in the group of people that I'm friends with. And I have a lot of working mom friends, too, which is fine. Um, I don't give them grief about their choices, and I think we just always kind of respect each other. Most of the guys that I end up talking to are usually just jealous. That you have a stay-at-home wife? Yeah. Why? Because... Because I pack you pudding cups. <laughs> Pack me lunches, do my laundry, cook my food. I figure if he's working like 50 to 70 hours a week, I've always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, and I kind of like the whole, like I would Happy have been... housemaker. Yeah, I would have been a great 50s housewife. So, we're both living our best life. Well, he's, I'm sure he's, he's probably not, but <laughs> he's a good home, home, home money bringer homer. Are the kids Bread knocking winner. at my doors? No, Breadwinner. The There's wind. wind. Okay. So that, uh, that was for Lisa. Thank you for the question. Three minutes in, one question. I know. Doing good. Let's speed it up. This is from Tiffany over at Large Family Love. She is awesome. If you haven't watched her channel, head over there. But she says, my question is, when are you coming to hang out with me in Virginia? Um, his best friend actually lives in Virginia as well. So I don't know. Maybe we'll make our way down there someday. Next, we've got a question from Kim Marie. She comments on pretty much every single video. She's been here pretty much since day one. Um, She's a big part of our, our YouTube family. So Kim Hurry asked, have you and Will ever disagreed on any content ideas either of you have had for this channel? No, she does the bulk of just about everything. I'll throw ideas her way every once in a while and she'll either use them or won't. I have like the final say. It's definitely her channel <laughs> and I just kind of support where I can, usually inject some humor. Yeah, I don't think we really ever disagree. If anything, he tries to push me to do more. And I'm just like, whoa. No. <laughs> so um, he's always giving me new ideas, and some of them I shoot down ever so politely, and other ones I, I do. But I no. one idea from last year that we might end up recycling one of these years. When you cook for me? No, that'll probably for sure happen. I was no. thinking something else, but you guys no. will have to wait and see. Okay. The next question is from Kaylin, one of my real life BFFs. She lives here um, near us as well. She said, what is your favorite part of being a YouTuber? I mean, there's a lot. The It gives me something creative to do, which I really like. Um, from somebody who claims to have no hobbies, it gives her a hobby. Yeah, I don't really have hobbies, and so this is my hobby. Um, I like the flexibility of it while it still brings in somewhat of an income so that I do contribute to the family finances. And then just like the community, the YouTube community, like the people I've met. I had a comment, one of you, you might even be watching, I, I don't remember who it was, said that they asked if it was weird if watching my videos and hearing my voice was relaxing. Is that what they said? You read the comment too. Anyway, yeah. and so my friend Kelly said that I am somebody's ASMR and I had to laugh, but that's, there's just, 
don't know. I'm. It's fun. This is a long one. This is from Shannon G. She says, I have lots of questions. You have probably already answered them before, but I want to know, why did you move out of state? I don't, I actually don't even know where you live. So we moved from Michigan to Kentucky almost four years ago, it'll be four years in July. Um, and it was very spur of the moment. We've kind of addressed this in another video, but basically job opportunities, kind of. Um, Essentially. And we needed a change of scenery. We were both kind of having like a mid, mid, midlife crisis at the time. And we ended up here because we have friends that live here. She said, why haven't you came back to Michigan yet? It's cold. Yeah. One of the reasons we moved from Michigan, honestly, was we hate winter. If I never have to shovel Thanks. again, it'll be too soon. We haven't moved back. We visit very often, especially the kids and I. But we haven't moved back yet because we just don't feel like it's time. I'm not saying that we never would. That's always been like an oh, open yeah. possibility. But right now, we things are going well. Do you plan on staying there forever and why? Sorry, did you have to add something? To I was that? just going to say, if it wasn't for family, I feel absolutely no pull to go back yeah. to Michigan. We don't love Michigan. Family is the only reason that we would go back. Do you plan on staying there forever? I kind of just said that. Like, nothing's forever as far as, like, where we live. We really like where we live. It would be great if we could get our families to move down here. Like, mm -hmm. in an ideal world. Do you like where you live? I feel like I'm answering the questions before I read them. I have a tendency of doing that. Yes, I like where we live. Do you like where we live? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's okay to him. Is it better than Michigan? Yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 minus the family situation. This is a lot of like where we used to live versus, okay, here's another question for her. How does the weather compare year round? Warmer. Much warmer. A little wetter. Yeah, a lot more wet. It rains a lot. It's raining right now. Uh, but the weather is all around a lot more mild. Our winters are more mild, even though it gets cold here. It doesn't get cold like Michigan cold. And we lived, like I was born and raised in Northern Michigan, not the UP, but like the Northern part of the mitten. So I'm used to like really cold winters and this is so much better. Do you have a support system and family here? Uh, no family, but we do have like friends that I would consider a support system. Yeah. Would yeah. you stay if you didn't have a support system? Like, do you think you could do it so far away from Michigan without any support system? I mean, kind of. We kind of do. Kind of do, <laughs> yeah. Even though we have friends that like we can count on for, for things like I. She's not one to ask for help. Yeah. I don't, I don't ask for help. I don't like having to put people in that predicament of like having to say yes or no to something. I think we could probably do it without like, a support system. Yeah. It'd be a lot more lonely if we didn't have friends here, but as far as like support system, that's the nice thing about me being a stay at home mom is that I'm usually around for most of that type of stuff. All right, moving on from that. Taylor Elaine asks, how did you and Will decide you were going to be a stay at home mom? And did you start being a stay at home mom when Jackson was born? I plan on having kids next year and I'm curious how you guys decided. Did you that decide? That just kind of happened. <laughs> yeah. It was actually for the longest time you brought home the inconsistent but typically bigger money and I brought yeah. home the consistent smaller money back in Michigan. I did direct sales, if you haven't. I don't really talk about that much, but I was in direct sales for about seven years. Um, very lucrative. I made it to like the top of the company and we, like when I was bringing in money, we were bringing in good money. And like looking back now, I'm just like, why weren't we smarter with that? But that is thanks. The company turned around, changed its structure, became a much worse company to work for. So but by then we were down here and I was making much more money than what I was. So we just kind of shifted into this. kind of swapped roles a bit, yeah. And I still considered myself a stay-at-home mom when I was doing direct sales because I was home. Right. But, but you had your nights and yeah. stuff like that where you'd have to go out for, you know, a couple hours. Yeah. And bring home the big bucks. And, and I tried working for a short bit here in Kentucky. Um, I worked for a... BMW roadside assistance for a while and then like four months into my contract they cut the contract and everyone lost their jobs anyway so I was like that's a sign to go back home because it was it was hard to try and make schedules work and that was before the kids were even in school and I was working like night shift like I would get home at 1 30 or 2 in the morning so it was not the best so anyway so now we're just working toward world domination via YouTube yeah thanks for subscribing um I don't think he cared like He's supportive of me being a stay-at-home mom. He likes his PB and J and his pudding cups <laughs> and his clean laundry. Okay, Sarah Sharf ninety six asks, "Are you religious?" Yes. Yeah. 
I was born and raised Catholic and you know the whole church every Sunday went to a Catholic school all of that so yep. very deeply ingrained on my behalf and on his part yeah I was not raised religious um, I've always believed in God but we never really went to church I had friends that I would go to church with sometimes growing up uh, but I became Catholic when I married him as part of that whole process so that's that. Sabrina Lynn 1987 asks, will you have any more babies? Not likely. <laughs> no. Um, if it were to happen, cool, yep. but I, we're outside of actually like getting my tubes tied, like we're, we're done. Or him getting a vasectomy, which apparently the word itself scares him. <laughs> like the mention of it, he's just like, no. So I probably should have had my tubes tied after my second C-section while they're in there, but we weren't sure at that point. We knew after we had Jackson that we, like, very soon after we had Jackson, we were still like, yep, we want more. And we got pregnant with Alice when Jackson was only eight months old, so if that tells you anything. And then after Alice... It was a, hey, if it happens, cool, <laughs> yeah. if not, whatever, and we're still in that spot, but it yeah. we're definitely moving further toward further. the end toward, of the yeah. spectrum as the kids get older of just like, meh. She was good. Yeah. We replaced her. We replaced me. We don't need to add more people to the world. <laughs> so our little family of four is pretty much perfect. So good question though. Um, girl FMVA. I'm assuming, does that mean girl from Virginia? Comment back. You comment on all my stuff and I, over on Instagram too. I'm just assuming that's what it is. But anyway, she asks, are you planning on buying a house in the future or just keep renting? Also, how many siblings do you and Will have? So as far as buying, because we don't know where we're going to like permanently plant our roots, buying right now doesn't seem like the wisest option. Well, renting, paying rent sucks. Hold on a second, there's a knock on the door. Come in. Okay, so renting also kind of hurts, but... Don't have to mow the lawn. He doesn't have to shovel snow. Yes, I do. Not really. It doesn't snow very often here, <laughs> but when it does snow, I still go out there and shovel the driveway. Very um, driveway. I would love to own a house. Yeah. But again, I mean, perfect world scenario. Yeah. Obviously, yes, I would like to. Own but just a home. the idea of like, what if we buy a house and then a year later we decide, oh, we need to go back to Michigan, or like something happens with the family and we need to move back to be like closer to help with. I mean, our parents are getting older, and I just, I don't know. It seems so permanent, and I know it's not because you can turn around and sell a house. And the real estate in our area like flies super quick. My friend Kaylin posted a picture of her house on Facebook, didn't even list it, and it sold like within two days. So, I mean, she's a real estate agent as well. So if we were to buy, we have like, yeah, but we also have a crap ton of student loans. Which make that difficult. Which make it difficult. Like we, anyway, that's a whole nother story. Yes. So, um, how many siblings do you and Will have? I have a brother that I don't really stay in communication with. We share the same dad, different mom, so he's a half brother. And then I have twin sisters. We share the same mom, different dads. They are four years younger than me, and I'm still in communication with them. I see them whenever we visit back to Michigan. I have two older tyrants. Tyrants. Sisters. Uh, yeah, he's the youngest boy. Only boy, but youngest. Little of... baby boy. So my sisters picked on me. He's got the bald spot to prove it. I do. Yeah. Kathy Stein 36 asks, how did you and Will meet? Tell us about your early days as a couple. We met at Walmart. 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 I was a manager. He was not. I worked in electronics. Yeah, I was loss prevention. The <laughs> early days. That's how we That's how we met, like, at a very basic level. Early days as a couple. I don't know. We clicked really quick. We played a lot of rock band. We did. We used to play rock band a lot. He would, I would do vocals. He would do guitar. Gosh, that was so long ago. We've been together now like 11 years. Yeah. Only married for this year will be nine, but. Jeez, where does the time go? Yeah. Um, yeah, our early days consisted of a lot of video games, Resident Evil, um, staying up all night because we were what? You were, how old are we now? Movies, video games, you're typical. 24. So I was like 24. Early 20s stuff, yeah. I would like to think. Yeah. Like, we didn't party. We were, like, the nope. nerdy, like, typical 20s. <laughs> so, like, video games, movies, ordering in pizza. Arby's, Taco Bell. Yeah. Frankly, kind of boring, but, you know. Yeah. It was fun. Like, I still, I look back now and it's like, 
be nice just have like one of those like a week back then again like where we have no responsibilities because even our jobs like we worked part-time right we worked retail part-time like very early morning so we were out we worked at the same store even after walmart we both worked together again uh we were home like earlier in the day like i don't know times were good tomboy01 asks what made you start a youtube channel uh i used to remember <laughs> not that's what i was just gonna say i don't really remember like i remember exactly. encouraging you to do it but i don't remember what like spurred you into the thought of doing it i had done blogging in my youth like when i was like 13 to just early knocking 20s. out the html yeah i used to code my own websites nerd uh and then obviously I watch YouTube and I was watching a lot of family vloggers. So we moved here to Kentucky. I started my blog up again, yeah, kind of. And it focused around like, the goal was like budgeting and frugal living and, and I, in a perfect world, I would love to be a frugal like person, but <laughs> anyway. So it started with the blog and then he had always encouraged me to do YouTube and I was like, I don't want to be on camera. I'm super shy and I'm very introverted. When Direct the... sales and YouTube. Yeah. She lies to herself. She's not. No, I really am. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then I just started it and the original intent was to be a like vlogging channel. Like vlogging. think daily bumps style family vlogging. That didn't last long. It, quickly turned into what it is now like it's evolved a lot over the years but we're coming up on three years this august of youtube so it wasn't like a like one thing it just kind of like slowly just fell into place and here we are i think really the main thing that held her back was the editing intimidation which once yeah. i got her in a program and showed her that it was actually pretty easy she pretty much took off from there and started looking up YouTube videos on how to edit and taught myself a lot. Yeah. He says he was really proud. I don't find it that like That's because you know how easy it is now. <laughs> well, then why are you so proud of me? You always because say I'm so a... proud of you for teaching yourself and it's really not because that big that's of a, a deal. big hurdle to overcome. He did graphic design in college when he went, so he was familiar with all the Adobe products. So he'd show me like very basics and I was using my nose is so itchy. I was using Windows Movie Maker. Movie Maker, yeah, because that's which free. Sucked. Um, it, sorry if you have to use that. It's great for if you're looking for something free. Not everybody yeah. wants to pay. No, that's true. But it was like very quickly, like within months, I was like, I, I can't do this. Like I need something that's going to keep up. And so anyway, Sunny Steffi says, "How many years have you been married? Nine. Nine. Do you feel better eating the way you do now or when you did keto, which affects your autoimmune disease less?" Just told her so, no in German. No, nine. So the way I'm eating now at the time of this video is different than I was eating a month ago. I've tried so many things through the years. Uh, I'm currently doing more of like a mindful eating with calorie counting most days. The problem with diets is that they're hard to sustain when you yes. do any sort of rigorous thing. Where it's like pretty much all of them will work if you stick with them. Yeah. But the hard part is, is that the ones that work really well are the strictest where you're doing yeah, like very the restrictive. hardest Keto. stuff. Because pretty much any time she jumps on the bandwagon for dieting, I go with her just because it's, well, <laughs> number one. Easier when I'm cooking. Right. It's like I feel bad when she's like, well, I made my kale salad and here's your cheeseburger. So, you know, on top of that, anything that she's eating when she's on a diet's healthier. So, I mean, I don't mind eating it. He'll eat pretty much anything. Um, so with keto, I lost a lot of weight really quickly, but looking back, hindsight, I was also very sick, like, internally. So as far as my auto autoimmune disease, my blood work, if you want to take it to, like, a medical cellular level, my blood work has not changed um, between eating keto and eating whatever it is I'm doing now. I get blood work every few months. My inflammation has stayed down. All of my blood work is fine. And so I don't think the way I was eating was affecting my inflammation so much. Um, but now that I'm on good medications and like we have that under control, my eating doesn't play as much of a part in the inflammation aspect of things. The Real Wendy Valencia. Hi, Wendy. So um, if you haven't checked out her channel, check hers out. She does a lot of budgeting and stuff. So you definitely want to go over there and see that if you're into the personal finance type stuff. I like this question. I want to hear about how you got engaged and I'll let him talk about this since he's the one that planned it. 
So, for the longest time, I always used to tell her that I wasn't going to pick her out a ring because whatever I picked, she wasn't going to like because I have no fashion sense, clearly. So I made him go and look at rings with me. I, I like told him what I wanted because I was like, you're not getting me a gift card. Like, I told her I was going to get her a gift card. She's like, no. I'm like, she's like, I don't even think they sell gift cards. I'm like, it's a store. They sell <laughs> gift cards. So when she made me go in and look at rings, uh, I asked the guy and pretty much told him that whole spiel. And he's like, yeah, we, we have them. I wouldn't suggest it, but we have them. Yeah. On uh, Halloween. Which is one of our favorite holidays. And pre-kids, we used to celebrate Halloween, like, a lot more than we do now with your basic trick-or-treating. Yeah, obviously, back in Michigan, we went up to Frankenmuth, which is, like, the German town up in uh, Michigan. <laughs> in Michigan. Yeah. Uh, home of the world's biggest Christmas shop. Bronner's. Um, One of my best friends also lives in Frankenmuth. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> and so, we went there, and they had this, like, mini-scale train ride that they like decked train. out for Halloween and we went and did that and then we had dinner at a place called Tiffany's up there had some pizza there mm -hmm. and then they have this really old-fashioned covered bridge wooden bridge it's wooden it's and it looks like something straight out of uh what's that Sleepy Hollow mm. the bridge and that and so we were there late enough that there wasn't a ton of traffic and we went out onto and, you know, obviously over water, went out under the bridge, and then get down on one knee, reach into my pocket, ask her if she'd marry me, and pull out a gift card. No joke. <laughs> gift card. And she's like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. And I'm like, seriously? And I, when I went and got the gift card, I had the person behind the desk actually fill in a total and everything on it. It looked legit. So, Because I knew she'd recognize my handwriting. Yeah. And so she opens it up and see that it has a pretty, you know, reasonably high total on there. She's like, are you serious? I'm like, yes. And so she, you know, looked down at me and she said yes. And so at that point I'm like, well good. You knew I was a keeper. <laughs> like, all right, if she'll marry me through this, <laughs> then I'm probably good. I'm like... Well, good, because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with this if you said no and pulled out the ring. Which... There you go. No, focus. It is. Okay, you can kind of see it, yeah. Covered in little itty-bitty diamonds. Yeah, well, the two, like, outside bands are the actual wedding rings. The engagement ring was the middle one. So anyway, he proposed with a gift card, but had a ring in his pocket. And she still has that gift card. I do. Somewhere. It's in a keepsake box. <laughs> so that's our engagement story. Jana Marie asks... Or says, congrats on the subscriber count. Thanks for sharing a glimpse of your life with us. Your channel is for sure one of my favorites. With thank that you. being said, yes, thank you. What are some of your favorite channels to watch? Also, any plans on going back to a keto diet in the near future? I'm going to address the keto thing first. Probably not. I tried to go back on it after my health issues after the first time I was successful with it. And it was really difficult to get back into the swing of things. And honestly, like, the thought of doing keto food again, outside of, like, steak, because I love steak, I it kind of turns my stuff, like, all the fat. I just, my body wanted green. So right now, I don't think I'll probably be going back to it anytime soon. As far as some of our favorite channels to watch, you can talk about yours first. I'm going to pull up my list of subs so I can see what I have on here so I don't forget any of my favorites. Um, I usually just end up watching like a lot of nerdy stuff whether it be like name video. some of the yeah name some of the like uh the uh, the screenwriting one like the, oh like all those because i like watching those with you too and they might find some of those humorous. um how it should have ended yes. is good um uh cinema yeah, sins yeah. what's the yeah 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 uh that one is uh pitch meetings which is on screen rants yes that one's funny uh, those ones are usually pretty funny. I have a couple of like, you know, like Fortnite and Smite gamers on there. Uh, He's very geeky. Do a couple of like the podcasts that also have like video sections like Jacko Willink and Joe Rogan and kind of funny. Also, uh, Matt Carriker. Oh no. yeah, and uh, Demolition Ranch yes. is amazing and... He has, so the guy that does Demolition Ranch has three channels. He's a veterinarian, so he has Bet Ranch. Ranch. 
Um, that one's not as pop. Like, he doesn't post as frequently, does he? No, he does. Oh, does he? Oh, okay. Like, he also has the other people that work at his bar oh. also post. So there's Vet the Ranch. Wall. There is Demolition Ranch, which, which is, is all, all about his, like... Guns. Is mostly weapons. guns. Yeah. And then what's the... Um, off the Ranch. Off the Ranch. Is their family vlogging channel, so... Very fun, like, family. Check it out. We watch that once in a while. Some of the ones I watch that I'm really into, like, especially lately. Well, lately, I'm subbed to a lot, but I don't watch as often as I used to. Um, so just going through here. Carlo McKenzie, I really like. Grady's Mom, I watch for inspiration on Husband Lunches. So if you like my Husband Lunch Box videos, go check out Grady's Mom. Because she does them every week as well, and she's way more creative than I am. Uh, Jen Chapin, or Chapin, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I, I apologize, but check her out. She's awesome, and I know she comments on some of my videos once in a while, and on Instagram and stuff, so... Um, we're like becoming like online somewhat acquaintance friends and I feel very popular because she has a lot more subscribers than I do. Uh, L Tiffany from Large Family Love, which I mentioned, she had a question on here. She does a lot of the food videos, the same thing I do. Large Family Grocery Hauls, which are always fun to watch. Love Meg, I watch a lot, for, especially for cleaning inspiration. I've watched her since before she got super popular, so that's one of those channels that I've watched for a long time. Lydia Sen is awesome for like videos about finances, budgeting, family. I love her. She's super sweet. Pretty Neat Living. I've watched her since before she was... Mm, I forget what her channel was, but her name's Jen. I watch her a lot. She's in her apron, of course, very popular in like my realm of channels that I watch. The Cooper Fam, The Former Mrs. Jones, The Fry Life. I love them. Frugal Freaks is another one that's good for budgeting and like money type stuff. The Wads is a good one. She is freaking hilarious. I laugh out loud every time I watch her videos and she just announced that she's pregnant with their fourth baby. So congratulations on that. The, this Lexington Life is a friend like in real life who has a vlog. She just had a baby this past week as well. Um, Wendy Valencia is great for budgeting videos. So that's just like a quick. Becca Bristow is great for like food um like nutrition she's a nutritionist i believe but she has a lot of good like what i eat in a days and like intuitive eating and she just had a baby sometime in the past like six months i think hopefully that gives you some ideas slow-mo guys is good slow-mo guys and we almost forgot matt stoney oh yeah if you like <laughs> to watch or even if you don't it's um, just interesting you fall into his and you're just gonna sit there and watch his videos he's a competitive eater yeah and he's tiny or like he He's skinny for sure, but he also seems like he's probably pretty short. And he puts away food like nobody's business. Insane, yeah. And incredibly quickly. 